Folks, you're in for a treat. What you're about to see here is history in the making because I'm one of very few positive reviews of Jurassic World Dominion. Yes, I liked Jurassic World Dominion. You want to fight about it? Because I won't. I won't. I'll just talk about it. Hey everyone, welcome back to another review. This week I have watched Jurassic World Dominion, the third slash sixth Jurassic Park movie. This is the end of the second trilogy, but technically it's the sixth movie in the series. It has a lot to live up to because Fallen Kingdom was terrible, but it was still fun. It was fun in a terrible way. Anyways, this is directed by Colin Trevorrow and he co-written this with Emily Carmichael. It stars a lot of people just as any blockbuster does these days. Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard, Laura Dern, Jeff Goldblum, Sam Neill, Mamadou Athi, DeWanda Wise, and Campbell Scott. They're all here together. The original crew with the new crew. That's the selling point of this. You gotta cash in on the nostalgia. <laughs> That's all anything does these days. Top Gun, Maverick, uh, Mission Impossible. They're all cashing in. I just named two Tom, Tom Cruise movies. But they're all cra cashing in on the nostalgia. And that's true. I mean, like, we're in the nostalgia phase of blockbusters. And I don't know when we'll get out. Its plot is pretty simple. The dinosaurs have been relocated once again to another sanctuary. But this time, there's these bioengineered locusts that could be maybe destroying all the crops in the world by design. And Biosyn is the bad guy here. B.D. Wong is also back in this. And not to go into the plot too much, but Campbell Scott plays like a Tim Apple kind of dude. Tim Cook, Tim Apple, whatever. <laughs> He's basically like capitalist, the bad guy. And so it's a really good commentary on capitalism and, you know, billionaires take, seizing a lot of power and like doing nefarious things which I'm sure some of them do. Uh, but anyways, that's the plot of the movie. Dinosaurs show up, there's dinosaurs, crazy things happen. There's motorcycle chases, there's dinosaurs being used as basically soldiers. Jeff Goldblum is Jeff Goldbluming. He is doing his <laughs> Ian Malcolm stuff and it's really great. And yeah, that's the plot. And the reason I like this movie is because it is the final key in the Fast and Furiousication of Jurassic Park. In a world, a post-Avenger world, you have to go big and bombastic with your blockbusters. Some would say no, because Top Gun Maverick, you know, is back, but they also went big and bombastic in a different kind of way. But it's also like, you think about it, it's like Fast and the Furious sort of changed the game a little bit because they went from stealing DVDs to going into space. And that's similar to what's happening here in the Jurassic Park series. They went from just a cool, fun little park into bioengineering. But if you really think about it, in some ways, Jurassic, Jurassic World Dominion is more akin to the original than the Fast and Furious series is akin to the original. And I'm saying that because everything about the original Jurassic Park, the bioengineering part, is here in the sixth movie. It's mostly about the bioengineering and the weirdness of having dinosaurs back and it's changing the climate, it's changing the way we react to nature. And so it's a lot of cool things doing cool things and there's fun action pieces and set design. But also I understand that a lot of people hold the first Jurassic Park, They're, it's like reverent to them. It is, it is cinema. It is just beautiful and great. And those things can be true, but you have to s separate your nostalgia because most of us have watched it when we were kids. And you have to separate that and realize we're never gonna get that. Even this movie comments on like, no, we're never gonna be that. We are the fast and furious version of Jurassic Park. And yeah, sometimes the dinosaurs do take a back seat and they are just set pieces, which is kind of a bummer, but that's where we've grown as the series. One criticism I have 
of this movie is that it's trying to be two sequels at once. It's trying to be a sequel to the original movie, but it's also trying to be a sequel to Jurassic World at the same time. And those two, two competing elements sort of butt heads a couple of times in this movie. Also would say that Chris Pratt's character is more of a passive character in this movie. He's just f going along with the plot. He's not really advancing his character in any way. And the only people that sort of advance their character are Laura Dern and Sam Neill. It's like we finally get that will they, won't they resolution. And uh, DeWanda Wise's character, who's really cool, uh, she sort of has like a, a growth period as well. So character wise, you're not gonna see a lot of development. Dinosaur wise, you're gonna see a lot of cool dinosaurs, a lot of cool fights, but it's mostly not about dinosaurs, but also it is about dinosaurs because it's, you know, it's trying to tackle too many things basically. So it is, in some ways, I could see why people don't like it, but at the end of the day, it's Jurassic Park and the Furious. It is set design, it is set pieces, it's action. You know what, I liked it. I don't care what people say, I liked it. It's not as bad as Fallen Kingdom, and it's not as bad as Jurassic Park 3. Actually, I would say it's on par with Jurassic Park 2, in which stupid things happen, but it's still fun to watch. I would rate this a six out of 10, which translates to a three out of five. Yeah, it was stupid. Yeah, it was corny at times. Yeah, the two, the old school and the new school competing with screen time was kind of weird, but also, what can you do? In a post-Avengers, post-Fast and Furious blockbuster world, this is what our movies are gonna look like in the summers. <laughs> Esercito riprova